Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Last time we killed off Gimpy Gerwin and freed the servants working in his fort, but uh, we kind of made the wrong decision there, the quote unquote wrong decision. I tried to leave without doing anything, but my companions taught me the error of my ways, and uh, they, well, kind of corrected the error, I feel like, because they don't seem to be mad at me. But Egg just overruled my decision and caused us to make the right one, to kill Gimpy Gerwin. We're free. It is the truth. The gods bless you, your majesty. That Gerwin bloke were a monster, my lady. A monster. Worse nor a pack of ghouls. Pack. No, worse nor a swarm. One month he kept me in darkness. And I only busted a tankard. I'll not stay here. It is an evil place. I'd rather go with ye, even if I'm to fight black lads along the way. There we go. We get a recruit for our trouble, even though two people disappeared. But we got a few extra cards as well since last time. And we're going to have to take a look at those as well. So the Dimeridium Shackles, we've seen that play out in the last match we did. Summon three bronze units from the opponent's deck to your side and lock them, which could be interesting, but I'm not going to use that just now. And then the Devana runestone spawn three copies of a Deathwish unit on the battlefield and then destroy them. Yeah, we spawn copies of a Deathwish unit on the battlefield, but we don't have any Deathwish units, do we? Not anything in particular, though. So, yeah, let's just leave it at that. Could be a good combination with the light infantry units, of course, but still... We have better ways to use our uh, artifacts with. So that's the new cards. And in the royal tent, we can actually check out another report. Gerwin's Code. Listen up, bumpkins. All transgressions shall be punished with the utmost severity. Theft, off with your arm. Insolence, off with your tongue. Laziness or carelessness. 50 lashes and trying to escape death. So yeah. If we were wondering, Gimpy Gerwin was a very bad man. And we're glad we decapitated him like that. Now, with that done, we need to cross a few literal bridges, and I think there's a puzzle battle right in between those bridges, so... Nilfgaardian, it appears like? Yeah, Nilfgaardian outpost on the bridge. There we go. A puzzle battle, Westerly Bridge. The Black Clads quickly realized they were in no position to control all of Angren. Instead, they focused their energies on strategically important locations. Inns, watchtowers, and bridges. They fought with the Lyrian Armory on one of them. Westerly Bridge. Who were the victors, you ask? Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Destroy all enemy units and use your leader's ability. I don't think that's a prerequisite, but it's just a hint, probably. There we go. So, fast immediately, but we need to destroy everything. The Guardian Knights with just 15 and 10, and we have a lot of Lyrian Lance Knights. Reduce Meath cooldown to zero. So, if we just use her now. So, boost Nala by 4 and give it 1 armor, then trigger all loyal abilities. So, we know what the loyal ability does. We get more charges. So, that's up to 18. And then, if we reduce Meath's cooldown, and we can do that again, probably. Which means that we're almost already there. Because if we now just do that on the Nilf Guardian Knights, like that, like that, like that, and then like that, like that, and like that, and just that. And the turn and use the Rivian Sapper. Don't we you worry just. Yourself, yeah, that, no that didn't seem like a puzzle battle at all. There weren't many options since we only had two cards, and. Yeah, like that. Okay, that was ridiculously easy. Well, that's gonna help us out a bit. So, marching orders, is that actually the same effect then? Just reduce the. Uh, cooldown of Meath to zero? That's actually cool, if that is the case. Uh, there it is. Yeah, reduce Meave's cooldown to zero, especially with the, the, um, not the Warhammer, the other one. The Broadsword, because the cooldown over there is five, which is really heavy, but if we can do that again, that's actually really cool. But yeah, not something we're going to use right now. That's a really quick puzzle to start things off with, but uh, that means we can just do more events in a single episode. So moving on. Meave stood waiting while her scouts cut through the tangled branches and roots that had overgrown the trail through the swamp. Suddenly, a soldier doubled over and began to retch blood. 
The same symptoms soon afflicted others in her ranks. A potent poison, was the medic's verdict. It seemed all those who'd fallen ill had shared a tent. One night, they'd chatted about an obelisk they'd destroyed, and the group of incensed peasants who'd cursed them for it. Fearing for their lives, the footman had gone to a local herbalist. She'd brewed them a potion to ward off black magic. Alas, the concoction had proved poisonous, while the herbalist had vanished without a trace. So yeah, pretty stupid soldiers there. Happily, Isbul concocted an antidote in time to deliver the soldiers from a certain and agonizing death. The mage explained their misfortune had not issued from a dark, corrupt force, but from simple human wickedness. Her calming voice and gentle smile lifted the soldiers' spirits. Trusting in her care, they soon wholly forgot the so-called curse. So there we go. Lucky we have Isbel, because Isbel has saved us twice already in Angren, and we're only like six episodes in. Um, so don't know, that doesn't actually lift morale, sadly. But uh, again, soldier life saved by Isbel, which is great. Even though she's changed to the destroyer instead of the healer. Now there's this little camp over here in the west. Eve rode at the front, her eyes fixed on the ground, and thus spotted the pit masked by leaves and branches. She tugged hard on her reins and steered her mount to the side. Alas, the cavalrymen behind her did not follow her lead. Leaves rustled, boughs snapped, and the horseman crashed to the pit's bottom, snapping his neck. Moments later, it was clear who'd set the trap when the forest came alive and a cry rang out. Uh, Meave, if you knew there was a trap in the ground, why didn't you just say anything? Because if he's behind you, he has time enough to react. But Nilfgaardian snares, Meave's father used to tell her that a true soldier does not set traps. That pits are the tools of brigands, poachers, and cowards. It seems fathers in Nilfgaard teach no such lesson. Meave spurred on her horse, jumping over the sharpened stakes before her and headed for the pitfalls architects. So a shortened battle, so it shouldn't be too difficult. We're gonna use our drummers to the fullest if we have any. It's a trap! Rally to me! So, no drummers, sadly. Order! And after three turns on turn start, trigger an ambush. And every turn on turn start, damage the highest power enemy unit by five of its power is an even number. Next time an enemy uses its order ability, boost self by two and gain two armor. So I want to take out those guys. Let's just start using our spells. There we go. Goodbye. And that is the end of that, I suppose. Because, yeah, I'm going to struggle with doing anything useful here. Because, yeah, I don't have any proper cards. So we'll see about that. Uh, I might as well use Meave. And put the drummer up top. We never know what our... Uh, what things are gonna do. Our artifacts might help us out a bit. Now, if we use Blizzard, because it's basically our only chance here, we might as well just use that on the... That one? Yeah, 8 damage is fine by me. And 2 damage. Okay. Is that why? Wait, what the fuck is going on? Life is mine now. That's artwork I haven't seen before. Disgraced Warrior. Force an enemy to damage Disgraced Warrior by its power, then damage that enemy by Disgraced Warrior's power. power. And that will strengthen all other Skellige allies in hand, decking on the battlefield by two. So, okay. And then the Disgraced Brawler damage self and two enemies by three. Other Skellige allies in hand's deck is so also with the same death wish, but we do six damage about. And then Arnie of the Patricide damage an enemy by the total number of enemy units. I'm gonna just keep him alive for now. And let's start with the Disgraced Brawler and just get those two units down. And then do that again. Like that. Hmm. So I could use those order abilities, but this guy is just getting the... The benefits, which is not good. Then, this actually turns the tide a bit. I'm gonna use the bomber on the back you mad? Don't take that. So we might actually damage that uh, cavalryman, that armored cavalryman. So we're getting helped by Skellige units all of a sudden. 
There we go, getting damage, which is good for Isbel. Dead. So number of enemies should probably uh, keep that in mind. Um, force an enemy to damage Disgraced Warrior by its power and then damage that enemy by Disgraced Warrior's power. So if we do this... He does get boosted again, which is sad, but I could use the Forager now I only need to, to damage those two guys on the right. And those, yeah, those get boosted twice because of their Death Wish abilities. Good. And now I'm using another Order ability, which is also bad. Shouldn't have done that, but there we have it. He's still under fire. Wise choice. Quite literally. Then I could go with Northern Wind in a second. But I need to be careful. If I use the Aratusa Adept, <sighs> I could actually just boost all copy all those disgraced brawler to get more of them. Not that I'm gonna get them probably, but anyhow, end the turn. Let's kill off the armored cavalry over here. Which is not doing that, sadly. Now... Two damage is also not going to be enough, so I'm going to have to be careful here. If I... So that's... Oh, that's on a cooldown, so I can use that multiple times. Great. Great. So let's use Northern Wind... To damage those guys. There we go. Killed off a lot of dudes. And then I could technically use this guy's order ability, but I'm not going to. So there we go. Then. Probably should use the Rivian Sapper first. Although I do get two charges with... I'm going to have to be careful here. Damage an enemy by the number of units he has. So Rivian Sapper first. Don't you worry yourself, Rick. Kill the armored cavalry while I can. Kill the arbalest, and then get rid of more damage over there. Then total number of enemies. Don't want to do that. And I can't kill him with that either, so I'm just gonna end the turn for now. Now I can. It hurts him. Which is good. Which is really, really good. So let's just. Use Arnjolf to kill uh, this guy. Then I can give the Lirian Harshduk to these guys and I can use army. him again if I want to, but self and two enemies by three. There we go. And then we can kill off we can't kill anything off, so we're going to have to wait with that. Unless I want to try and kill this guy as well, but I don't want to. Let's hold off. Should be able to win this. If I yes. use Isbel last. That's four. And it gets an extra charge because it's of the cooldown, which is a bit weird. Walk away. So Isbel. Then I think I'm going to get the Disgraced Warrior. To damage the Alba Pikeman, which kills him. And we do get damaged as well. Then we can use Arnulf to damage the Pikeman and damage his Pikeman. And then the turn. My prescription. A bit of blood setting. Heal an ally and boost him by the same amount. That is interesting. But damage an enemy, damage an enemy, okay. So might as well use Xavier now first. If I use Xavier on the Disgraced Warrior, that's not going to help me much, but if I do it on the Disgraced Brawl, you know what, let's do both of them. So I'm going to get myself killed in a second here, but that's as intended. So let's use that. And then force an enemy to damage him like this. That means that... Um, Isabel's damage is up to 51, which is... Wow, that, that was loud. That was really loud. And then I can damage... No, I can't damage him anymore. So I hope that last card doesn't put us over. 
because that would be bad. So get all allies immune. That's not going to help you very much. So there we go. That seemed like a story battle. Kind of missed that on the lead there. Caught between Lyrian Hammer and Skelligan Stone, Nilfgaard was shattered, destroyed. The victors now stood eyeing each other. These islanders were not like those Meave had met before. They wore no armor and carried no shields. At their fore stood a man as stout as an ox and bald as an ancient ghoul. His men called him Arnjolf, the patricide. I thank you for your aid, Arnjolf, said Meave, extending a hand. Aid, she says. Aid? Do you hear that, mates? <laughs> the Skelligers exchanged glances, then erupted in roaring laughter. Not here to help you, not at all. We're after killing. Join me and you shall have your fill. Join you, since? <laughs> Just who the hell are you? Meave, Queen of Rivia and Lyria. Meave, Arnjolf said, his tone sobering. I know the name. Let me Goodman call ye bold. Praise your courage to the high heaven. So be it. We'll follow you into fire, wench. Just let us taste of blood. Grant us a death worthy of heroes. Meave couldn't help but smile, then nodded to accept. That is interesting. Illyrian stepped aside as tattooed warriors joined their ranks. So, Lippy Gudmund, if you remember, that's one of the first episodes we ever did on Thronebreaker, was a Skellige warrior that we, instead of killing him, we let him run rampant between the Rydnilf Guardians. So that just got us an easy extra band of Skelligers. Arnil the Patricide has been added to your army. Dogger Two Blades. That is interesting. And of course, a disgraced brawler and warriors. Interesting. Let's take a look at all that. So yeah, the abilities seem to be the same. Damage an enemy by the total number of enemy units on a cooldown, which is great. And then Dago Two Blades, play all Skellige units from your graveyard. Oh my god. That is awesome. It also has a whopping 16 provision cost. But I think we can help with that. And the rest we kind of know, right? Yeah. So only 4 provision for these guys, which is fine actually. I want to make a bit of a change to my deck, I think. So it's high time we update the soldiers' quarters to their maximum level. So 10,000 gold and 2,000 wood. There we go. Recruit crap up to... Recruit? Recruit crap. Yeah, recruit cap to 300. Which allows us to make one hell of a deck if I'm not mistaken now. So there we go. All the Skelligas added to our deck and I changed the uh, froth, the golden froth to blood. Which allows us to look at five cards and play two and discard the rest. Which should help us out in getting the cards we actually want in our uh, play there. And then the Devana runestone is actually more interesting. So if we add that instead of Valzu's Thunder, that might be really interesting. So let's just do that. So very heavy Skelliger deck, but I do like Skelligers. So there we go, take that down. We'll see how that goes later on. So Skelligers to our aid, which is interesting, but weren't we fighting at... Oh, the Camp of the Disgrace. So these guys are called the Disgrace because, of course, Alnjorf is called the Patricide because he killed his father, if I assume correctly. So let's actually check him out in the tent. So the mess tent. Hello, Arnjolf. Arnjolf, find a place at one of the tables. Have a drink. Meet my men. <laughs> I think there's been a failure to communicate, lass. I didn't join your army to meet men, but to meet death. A good, honorable death quicker you lead me to that, the better. I wish not to pry, but why do you long for death? For only death can cleanse me of shame. You must have heard what they call me. Arnulf the Patricide. A moniker I earned. Oh, I did. To die by one's child's hand. A terrible fate. And it shall be mine as well if I lose this war. But did you earn it, this fate? What? I... Not always have I been just with Willem. I dismissed him, neglected him, but... <laughs> neglected? Listen, lass. My da, he beat me till my skin turned blue and I chucked red bile. He drink and beat, drink and beat. My brother, Ulf, da clobbered him to death. My ma, she took her own life. Never met this son of yours. But I know you's a bit now, and I can say this. No kind of yours needs slaying. Okay, that's positive, I assume. So, your tattoo, what does it mean? 
I can't help but wonder. What does it signify? The tattoo on your head? Ain't the tattoo? Carve these runes with a knife. The method makes little difference. What do they mean? Aim here. Message for enemy archers. <laughs> okay, aim here. Great. Alas, don't seem they can read it. At least not from a distance. And when they get close, it's already too late for them. Okay, so this guy wants to die because he killed his own father. Pretty straightforward, I suppose. So long, Anjol. Okay, that's a bit of backstory on that guy. And why is there a golden chest next to my royal tent? That seems a bit overdoing it. Never noticed that. But, moving along. Oh, look at that. The Nilf Guardian's corpses are uh, just, just floating down the river. That is a cool little detail, as a lot of this game is. Cool little details. I can't seem to pass over here. Just got a bit of resources from that. But according to the map, we're heading towards some uh, elven ruins. Doesn't seem like I can go over here. But over here on the east side of the map, well, from where we were going, yeah, Blood Karn. That sounds like a vampire lair. So let's have a little pixie inside of this thing. The scouts rode at the four, with Meave right behind them. Their task, to find safe passage for the rest of the force. One among them probed for the quagmire's depth, a pole of five L's in hand. Suddenly, all heard a loud clang. The scouts dismounted, then heaved a bronze statue from the mire. Once it was cleaned of slime and muck, Meave instantly recognized its elven handiwork. The sculpture was exceedingly well preserved, save one detail. Someone had removed its face, leaving a black hole in its stead. Search the environs, ordered Meave. Amongst some brambles, they discovered the entrance to a vast tomb. Its doors had been torn open. On the ground before them lay scattered bones, some yellowed with age, others fresh, cracked and tattered from having been gnawed. Okay, let's enter the tomb. Neve stood silent and contemplating at the tomb's threshold. Then, torch in hand, she entered and waded into fetid waters. Her soldiers followed close, arms at the ready, a nervous sweat on their brows. Frescoes on the tomb walls depicted Angren swamps and the beasts that prowled them. Two words were inscribed over the largest of the horrors. Gvern Iker. The bloody mistress. Barnabas Beckenbauer whispered. The bloody mistress. Because, yeah, Iker is blood indeed. So, Gaven. Suddenly, is a roar thundered from deeper inside the tomb. Meave turned from the frescoes to see monstrous eyes blazing in the dark. Even Ake's normally steely mean betrayed a raw, consuming fear. Gaven Iker. So, Gernicora then? There we go. Warden of the Swamp. Elven ruins. To whom had this half sunken, ivy strewn tomb belonged? No one in recent memory could say for sure. The elves who built the structure had fled Angren centuries past. The locals now only knew it as the final resting place for a great warrior, a defender of the marshes against an ancient evil. Eliminate the ancient fiend with special rules. So if he can focus damage on that thing, he might be able to kill it in one go. To me, will not die this day. 250. Every two turn on turn start, banish a random enemy unit and spawn a phantasm. Death wish return a unit that was banished and damage colossal fiend by three times that unit's power. Okay. So, um, interesting, I suppose. Look at five cards from your deck, then play two and discard the rest. That's fine, but I think I'm gonna start with the Rivian Onachu then, I suppose. Or maybe just a war wagon. Just a war you wagon. You can try to win them all, but you won't. So that's just it. That colossal fiend is the only enemy over here. Interesting. So let's just use the Rivian Onager then and start whacking it. It's so dark and wet. Why is it everywhere we go? It's dark and wet. <laughs> Yes, Barnabas, why is everything so oh, dark and wet? Forager! There we go. And we got one of our units back. And the Rivian Onager can keep going as well. So that's good. 
I might not actually be able to kill him. Because this is going to do 1 damage. The Northern Wind is going to do 4 and 2. But that's basically it. Nope, I have lost this. Let's try that again. 27. That's a bit weird. Return a unit that was banished and colossal field by three times that unit's damage. Okay, that unit's power. That is interesting. Okay. Then. Um, I'm gonna put the Rivian Onager here as well. Now we're gonna use me to get another. Uh, ooh, and Rainer is one to get pulled up as well. Another Arbalest. Then I can use the Regiment Drummer to pull another Arbalest, which does 7 damage. Your command. And then Reynard will reset Her all Majesty the charges. You can use exceptional. one hit on that Fiend, that Phantasm. And then maybe even pull another... Ooh, that is good. That is good. Life me now here I'm and proud. then the Wagenberg over here. One armor is fine for me and then let's just damage it two times as well here we go so this crazed brawler put him over here, here. and then regiment drummer with another one of these disgraced brawlers <laughs> and that's good now if you use the divana runestone we can copy those disgraced brawlers and consume them immediately giving us three charges on the Rivian Onager and boosting all our fancy dudes over here which they can damage the Phantasm and the Fiend then and we get more units back then three times the Rivian Onager and that's it for now now Arniolf over here we can use Meave to pull yet another uh, Arbalest and we can use set our blasts to damage us further. And then the hmm, extra charges, extra charges. That would be nice over here. Left, right, left. Uh, what now? And then end the turn. Ooh, that is good. That is good. So now the disgraced brawler with this. Arniolf, Arniolf with one. Ah, oh, and the Wagenberg did lose all his uh, his armor. That is annoying. Um, might as well then try to play the blood card. You know, let's just use the stray slinger. Okay. And then kill off my own Wagenberg here. And basically that is it. Doesn't really matter. There we go. I will get another charge with the Onager on the Fiend. And the turn. Then the Blood Card. Which gets us another Rivian Onager probably then. Yeah, another Rivian Onager and the Blizzard Card. So those are gone. Then I use the Onager over here and then the Blizzard Card. I could probably just do 20 damage now. Although... It's probably better if I use the Disgraced Brawler for that, or Raynard. Yeah, let Raynard attack. Oh no, 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 that's not good. Okay, never mind. I can't use it on the Fiend because there are no two targets, so there we go. It's another one down. And then we get this one, which kills our highest unit, and then we get it back for some reason. Let's get Arniolf back. And then the Forager can kill Rainer and the Aretuza Adept, which catches lots of charges with the Onagers. And there we go. That was a bunch of damage as well. And then the turn. Use the Northern Wind to get that final one going. Getting our Onager back. Then Neve Warhammer, which... Am I going to use mass? Something with high damage. Could, could play all the Skellige units from our graveyard, but that's gonna happen anyway, I think. Um, 
You know what? Could play a trinket from the graveyard, although that's not a blitz unit. I'm just gonna get another Gligan Arbalest out. Then we get Arniolf itself, himself, then the Regiment Drummer with the Arbalest first. That's 7 damage, and then Dagger 2 blades. It's just gonna just, yeah, cross all those things away again. Sadly, no extra charges for my uh, Onager, and then twice 3 damage. And I didn't get to kill it, but there we go. I think that's the last of them, but keep your weapons at the ready. In her torch's feeble glow, the queen examined the beast's corpse. She could not help but to shudder in disgust. Perhaps it's better, she thought, that we faced it in the dark. At the corridor's end, they found a closed door. Before any could draw near, it opened with a crash. Beyond lay a circular room. Light shone through a hole in the chamber's ceiling, illuminating a stone pedestal and the sword that lay upon it. The air in here, it crackles with magic, whispered Isbel. Meave gripped the blade's hilt. A soothing warmth filled her arms and spread across her shoulders. Her tired muscles ceased trembling. Her fingers, stiff as sticks, relaxed. She brandished her prize, the air hissing as the blade sliced through it. She then nodded approvingly. The reward had been worth the risk. Ooh, does that mean we get a new leader card? Oh yes, Meave and Granny Blade. Look at that artwork, that is really cool. Barnabas Beckenbauer, a gleam in his eye, asked to look at the unsheathed sword. The gnome studied the quillions intently, having spotted an inscription there. Can you say what's written there? Asked Meave. Yes, uh, perhaps. They're clear, the words. Their meaning, not necessarily so. Wieldeth me, and loseth not hope amongst the blood-red waters. Hmm. It sounds like a riddle, but I've no wish to solve. We should move on, and quickly so. Okay, we got ourselves an awesome sword. Now I'm really curious what that actually does. Because there was a trophy for getting all leader cards, and we still haven't gotten it, so there's probably one more weapon in this game somewhere. But, the Angreni Blade. Shuffle an ally into your deck and play two cards from your deck and trigger all, ally loyal all allies' loyal abilities. Cooldown 6. Might as well select that. Then, what I want to do is adjust this a bit then. We've been with the Manticore trophy for a while now. Since we're afraid of what uh, Egg can do without it. But, if we remove that, might as well swap it out for the Lyrian Banner then. Because the Lyrian Banner gets us a reduction in cooldown. So we only have... A cooldown of 5 then, instead of 6. Then we also have, remember, the marching orders where we can reduce me's cooldown to 0. Which is something I'm actually curious about now. But Northern Wind is really powerful. And Blizzard is just a, a guessing game. So might as well just go with marching orders instead. Uh, there we go. Marching orders. So that's a bit of a swap in the artifact division. But we'll see how that works out next time. So, with that fancy and granny blade discovered and equipped, we're gonna take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And when we get back, well, I think we might be able to reach Tuzla Castle and face Caldwell if he is still there. So thanks again enormously for watching. I'll see you guys next time in the next episode of Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.